Hello everybody and welcome to Wine and World. My name is Andreas Somlier at Wine and World and today we are going to taste Syrah or Shiraz grapes. Syrah is a grape that uh, we actually don't know exactly where it came from, uh, but uh, we do think it is originating from uh, the northern Rhone Valley uh, in France. Some uh, legends say it may have come from Egypt, then into Sicily, then into France. Some say it has been grown uh, in the northwestern part of France for thousands of years. Uh, we actually don't quite know, but it has caught on exceptionally well in the world. And now it's grown in uh, Argentina, Chile. Uh, it's grown in Australia, South Africa, United States, all over the place. Uh, Syrah is a very uh, thick skin grape with a lot of color uh, in the skin, so the, the wines tend to be really dark. Uh, uh, the grape also likes uh, hot climate, so it develops a lot of alcohol and therefore also uh, a better, or perhaps not better, depending on your liking, but uh, a mouthfeel that is uh, very big powerful wines. So today we have with us five wines. Uh, all of them, our four of them are 2016, one is 2015, three of them are in the same uh, price range and two of them are in the same price range. So three around $25 mark and two of them are around the $45 uh, mark. So we have with us uh, Antil, from the uh, United States. This is Syrah, everyone's a Syrah. Uh, Trapiche, Argentina, Mendoza. We have Paxton from McLaren Whale in Australia. Domaine du Colombier, a Croze Hermitage from Northern Rhone Valley in France. And as a little joker, I actually found this one. It is uh, Syrah du Valais. It is actually from Switzerland. And I have never tasted a wine from Switzerland before. This is a Syrah. So you know uh, Geneva is uh, in Switzerland, but it's a very short uh, distance from the northern Rhone Valley. Actually the Rhone River starts in the Geneva uh, area and uh, the, the, the river goes down there. Uh, down to Avignon and, and, and further south in France. I will get uh, my fiancé to pour the wines. I will not look at them uh, and I will try to see if I can, uh, you know, figure out which one is which, uh, both the price range and also the country. Uh, let's uh, start to get uh, the wines poured, shall we? Okay, so now we have the wines poured. Each uh, one of them has a number uh, written on it here. I do not know which is which. Uh, so, let's get these tasted. So let's just start with number five. So, it uh, on the nose, smells... Uh, It almost has a little smoky smell, uh, like uh, almost like a fake smoke aroma. But um, you know, it can come from the charring of oak. Smoky and <coughs> and dark, dark berry and fruit smells. But it's very smoky. Interesting. Very smoky. Next one. very should i say kind of doesn't give away anything in terms of fruit it's very quiet where it's quite cold so this you know i would say uh, cold climate 
dark cold red fruit i'm thinking north climate i'm thinking hot climate and it's smoky i don't know hmm this one also smells kind of you know cold fruit not heavy on the nose uh, not a lot of alcohol uh, thinking cold climate also on this one. It's not easy. This one smells really weird. Uh, I never smelled a Syrah that smells like this before. Uh, it uh, has some kind of strange strange herbaceous uh, smell to it huh. and the last one on the smell hmm yeah, thinking that is a more a warm climate let us well let's just move through them and see very velvety smooth berries it's uh, vanilla smoothness five okay and this one also not exceptionally uh, um, focused structured not um, huge concentration in any way also smooth also vanilla spicy it's not easy that one was good very nice good acidity i should say it's uh, also interesting to see kind of see how these develop uh, as of now, none of these have been like, you know, extremely uh, concentrated, but I have my favorite so far. This one is good. Good acidity, also good concentration. And it's kind of green. And last one. Well, was, wasn't this difficult? They say that uh, Australian Shiraz wines, they uh, tend to smell like eucalyptus because there is so much uh, eucalyptus trees growing in uh, Australia in general and particularly down there in South Australia where the, the wines are grown or most of them. But I was there uh, this March and we got to smell both the uh, eucalyptus and, and the Australian Shiraz wines. So I'll see if I can try to kind of smell out the Aussie. It's not easy. Okay, I'm gonna say this uh, number five here is Australia. Because it's warm, it's oaky and I think that has the, the eucalyptus smell. I uh, think number three is very dead on the nose. Actually, I'm not sure, but perhaps this one is Argentina. Number two, very peppery on the, on the nose. I'm thinking this could be the, the Croce Hermitage, the French. Say this one is the French. It's very good. And then number four. It's very the smell uh, smells actually a bit like perhaps it is corked. It does a little bit. It smells a little bit corked, 
but I'll... Yes, yeah, definitely. This one is, this one is corked. This one is corked, and it's high acidity. It's very difficult to say where it's from when it's corked, um, but I will see if I can manage to actually do that as well. This one is very good. And it's kind of warm in style. I'm thinking it is uh, Antil Farms, Sonoma Coast, United States. I think number one is United States because it is very fruitful. It's quite warm. Uh, it's very high quality. Mm, so, and I know that the the US wine is one of the two ones that are high in quality, or highest in price. I should say the quality might be different, but I think number one is United States because of that. I think number two is uh, Croze de Hermitage from uh, France because it has those kind of peppery flavors and smells and aromas that I would characterize with Northern Rhone. I think number three is Argentina because I haven't tasted any Argentinian Syrah before and I don't recognize it. I am going to say that the corked one is yeah, it's the wine from uh, Switzerland because I think number five is Australia. But you know, I might be completely off, but uh, let's get the correct answers in. Okay, here are the answers. Number one, Antil Farms, correct? This is United States. Number two, I said was uh, France. I was incorrect. That is Argentina. And uh, I am mistaken there. Number uh, three, I said number three was Argentina, but number three is uh, actually the wine from Switzerland. Number four, uh, I said was uh, the Switzerland, but uh, number four is actually the the French one, and it's corked. And number five is the Paxton from Australia. So I got two right at least. I got the eucalyptus in Australia, and I got the quality of the United States. Um, the corked wine was the one I have had a couple of times before from France. I know this is really good. Uh, I thought that was number two, but that is actually Argentina. So, which is interesting. This is interesting. I thought Argentina was Northern Rome. Now that I know the answer, I um, I can say that uh, it has uh, it is a little bit it's more oaky than uh, what uh, the Domaine de Colombier usually is, but uh, it's uh, quite a decent uh, wine. Number three. This one is the other high-priced wine uh, from Switzerland, and in terms of geography, it is very close to Northern Rome, but it's kind of... Um, I don't feel the concentration. I don't feel. Uh, I don't feel that this wine should be priced at this range. But you know, some wines uh, they are quite dull at an early age. But if you give them uh, a couple of hours in a carafe, uh, decant it, or if you store it, then it might develop into something uh, re really beautiful. But um, yeah, um, I gotta say I'm kind of like 
I wouldn't, I did not expect to get everyone right at all. I'm actually kind of, uh, I think it's cool that I got the US wine and the French one. Um, it was a little joker in here uh, because of the corked wine. Uh, they are very uh, different in character. All of them are Syrah wines and all of them are uh, young wines. I'll just take and remove the the corked one. It smells. How does corked wine smell like? It smells like wet cardboard. Like a you know wet wood in a basement. It's it's, um, it's it, it, I mean it's not an unpleasant smell. It's just something unpleasant in a wine. But uh, I mean doesn't smell bad. But there doesn't smell any fruit. There's no fruit there. So definitely definitely corked. Um, some people I mean you could perhaps smell it if you took the cork out of the wine. But we'll just put this side here and we'll focus on these ones. Wines from a hot climate will be warmer in feel. Uh, they will have more body, usually because of higher alcohol volume. And the, the, the wines from the cooler areas, uh, I would actually say, I mean, Northern Rhone, it's a border area of where you can grow Syrah. The Syrah grape, it thrives in dry soils, granite, schist, sand. Uh, it also likes it quite hot, but not too hot. So it was brought to Australia for the very purpose that it is quite hot in Australia. Uh, and But uh, in South Australia or uh, in uh, Southeast Australia, down the Melbourne area, it's uh, not that hot. It's... Um, of course it's hot but it's not excessively hot so it's possible to to grow grapes there uh, they grow everything syrah or shiraz as they call it is uh, thriving there and um, yeah they uh, you know they make uh, some really good ones one of the most uh, uh, famous ones is the penfolds grange i think that's how you pronounce it at least penfolds okay they also produce other Penfolds produces other wines as well, but that is kind of their cult wine that goes for hundreds of dollars. And um, it has this, you know, they have this eucalyptus type uh, uh, thing on the nose. Uh, kind of a little herbaceous green thing that also reminds me of mint in a way. Uh, well, in, in cooler areas such as Northern Rhone, you will have more uh, blackberries. Uh, you will have more uh, kind of forest feel, twig, uh, or leaves, those types of aromas. Uh, you know, depending on how much they oak it, you will get more uh, spice, more vanilla. The United States wine, which I got right, it is quite uh, spicy on the vanilla. So I'm thinking to use American oak. Oak from the United States produces more vanilla flavors than oak from France or from Czech Republic or from Germany, um, which is a little telltale sign that you can use to try to help you out if you want to figure out if the wine is from Old World or uh, New World. Um, I should actually not use that because, you know, Australia is also considered New World. Uh, I don't know what types of oak they use. I don't know if they have oak in Australia. French Syrah, cooler in style, uh, as I said, more blackberries, more forest types of flavors. Also, uh, black pepper is a thing that they say uh, is kind of usual to smell uh, in Rome style Syrah wines. Argentina, I haven't uh, had before. And... Um, Neither have I had uh, Switzerland. So the Swiss doesn't have the pepper that Northern Ron has. I can't find it at least. And uh, Australia is quite very 
aromatic on the nose. Argentina has the types of nose that I would expect in Northern Rhone, that's why I said Northern Rhone, but it's far away from Northern Rhone. But it has way more oak. But the thing is it it doesn't smell a lot of oak, but it tastes a lot of oak. It tastes a lot of oak. Um, the Swiss one does not taste a lot of oak at all. It's very focused on fruit acidity. Very cool in style, as you would expect from a Swiss wine, even though it's South Switzerland. A little bit of uh, spice shine through now, and also some green notes. Just for me now, I'm, since I now know it's the, it's the Australian wine, I'm thinking eucalyptus all the time. It's very fragrant on the nose. Which one you would prefer depends on your palate. So if you like more uh, oaky wines, you would prefer Argentina, uh, Australia, and to, no, yeah. You would prefer Australia, Argentina, and um, because the United States uh, wine is also quite fruity. It has a lot of oak in there, or it has some oak in there, but it's also very fruit driven. The U.S. wine is very good, and the Swiss one is kind of the odd one out in a way. You will, uh, some people will like it, some people uh, will not. It's easier to like these other wines because they are more rounded off with the oak and everything. But the since the Swiss one is also a high quality wine. But it is way more green. It's kind of it's it's very green, herbaceous uh, smells of uh, leaves that are green and full of chlorophyll. So this has been uh, a tasting a little out of the ordinary. Um, we have tried five Syrah slash Shiraz wines. Uh, one of them was corked. Uh, the Australian one and the U.S. wine. They were correctly. Uh, identified and uh, I mixed up the others Argentina and Switzerland which one you would prefer depends on your palate what do you prefer if you prefer uh, more oak more warm style wines go for with the Syrahs from hotter climates and if you want uh, more uh, green herbaceous um, peppery aromas in your Syrah wines, then go with the uh, Northern Rhone type wines from, you know, uh, Cornas, Hermitage uh, and the other regions up there that uh, have uh, either 100% Syrah wines or 80% Syrah, Syrah wines. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you have learned something and if you have then please like, share, subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye bye.